Hello and welcome to another episode of Eberhard Outdoors. Uh, I just got back yesterday from a uh, very brief hunting trip down in southern Ohio, uh, down in Wayne National Forest. I ran into a literal flooding down there. Uh, I spent two days scouting, um, had several locations ready to hunt, had five cameras out pretty much in transition zones. I hunted Monday and I saw several does and fawns, but I, I filmed this little creek that I was hunting over. There was two creeks that came together. And uh, it was literally, the creeks were probably three to four inches deep on Monday afternoon when I was hunting on the evening. When I went back, when I woke up Tuesday morning, because I was not hunting any mornings. One thing on late season hunts, if you're hunting anything food-based, you, know, you know, where you're hunting a transition bedding to feeding, uh, it's really hard to hunt mornings. It's really hard to enter without spooking things it's during the late season more than any other time of year. And so when I woke up Tuesday morning, it it was pouring. And I looked at the weather forecast and it called for flooding. So I got around. I planned on staying until Thursday or Friday. I got around and it's a good thing I did. When I went to pick up my fourth camera, uh, that little creek that was about four inches deep, was six foot deep and raging. Uh, I actually could barely get to my camera because the tree I had it on was had water around the base of it. It came halfway up my knee boots. And the banks on that little creek were like six foot high when I prepped that location. And there was just a trickle of water in the bottom. And uh, there was a couple roads after I picked those cameras up I couldn't get down. I had to go around some different roads. So it was a torrential downpour and it was, it was supposed to rain for the next, uh, that, the rest of that day all night long and then the next day. So there's no way I could have hunted. Uh, you got to show the negative with the good because uh, I did film going through the hills. And, uh, but when I was scouting, I had my camera and saw a couple small bucks. I saw a six point in a spike horn. That was it. On cameras, that's all I had to the same six and spike that I that I actually saw when I was scouting, I got them on camera. So nothing of any size whatsoever. In southern Ohio, heading into Wayne National Forest. In fact, there's a sign right there. Doing a little bow hunting. It's January 1st. Coonville. Interesting little town here, it looks like, if it is a town. I don't see any stores. It's an old church. That's right, it tip over. A lot of big bucks come out of Southern Ohio. Lots and lots and lots of big bucks. It's January though, so some are losing their antlers and it's just gonna be tough. Got a couple locations looked at already. Never been to any of these places before. It's also January 1st, so I got to watch both Michigan and Ohio State get beat in the bowl games last night. But man, were those good games. Could have went either way on both of them. But it's January 1 and I'm still scouting. It's been raining for two days. Got drenched yesterday. I've got the flu. Just trying to work through it. Feel a little bit better today. Scouted yesterday a little bit. Prepped one location and I about fainted up in the top of the tree, man. I about passed out. I was that drained. Southern Ohio is very beautiful country, but there's lots of places the deer can be. I've always found hunting in the low areas where the, there's more vegetation is always best in the saddles. When I say saddles, I'm talking about the saddles, the low spots between the hills. Uh, that's typically more moisture, more vegetation. And uh, out here, the big bucks, they will often, depending on the terrain, they will often like to bed up on the top of the hills if there's a visual through the timber and they'll try to bed where they can win something from the opposite side and visually see down the side they're bedded on. So it's a little bit different out here. Going out to prep some locations. It's been raining here. Rolly Hills, curvy roads. It's interesting. It's a different type of hunting than what I'm used to, but I, uh, I like to embrace
race new styles running. Uh, first year I shot 150 incher down here, 10 point. Um, and then the next year I did not. And then last year I brought my brother down here and in December, again, after gun season, I've always been here in the late season after their gun season ended. In fact, the first one I shot that 150 incher was taken, I think, three days after gun season, their gun season ended, and the property did get gun hunted. So it was an interesting hunt. And uh, But anyway, last year, my brother made what I considered to be a mistake that never ever should have happened. Uh, he's a stunt lock guy like me. He hasn't paid attention to wind in probably 15 years. Um, he's not an avid hunter like me, but he does get out hunting. He's hunting with a crossbow because he has to. So I brought him down here for the first time. He bugged me and bugged me and didn't bug me to come. So finally I brought him on an out-of-state hunt. We hunt differently. And he was in a tree, picked out a great tree down in a transition zone, down in a, a hole, if you will. Uh, but it had a big ledge, so the deer had to come through this one little hole to get from point A to point B. They had no other route. And um, he was up there in his cell lock suit. Everything was fine, probably 23, 24 feet to his feet. And about an hour before dark, he started to get chilled. And again, this was uh, late December. And so he had another jacket inside of his backpack. And he knows better than to do what he did, but he took that jacket out, and it was an exterior jacket that he brought to use as a layer garment. But because it was only an hour before dark, he said, what the hell, I'll just put it on and, and wear it over top of my sunlock. A huge mistake. He put that on 20 minutes later, Big Buck came in, transitioning right through, got to about 25 yards, he got ready to take a shot, and then Buck winded him. Didn't pick him, winded him. Definitely because he had that jacket on. He said the winds were going in all different directions down there. Um, and also thermals going downhill, at, you know, in the evening. So uh, I was pissed. I was very livid because when you come out here in the late season or any place on heavily pressured land, public land, late season, trying to kill a big buck, trying to get on a big buck is very difficult. Gun season stifles a lot of their daytime movements. And he had that opportunity he said it was at least 130 inch buck, at least a 10 point. Uh, so to me, it's probably 140. He's very conservative when he judges stuff. And uh, he blew it just because he chained, he put, didn't put that, he didn't take off his cell lock jacket and put the jacket on and then put the cell lock over top. That's, that's why he got busted and he knows it. He absolutely knows it because he wears that, it's a street jacket for him. So uh, it wasn't like it was a layer garment that he keeps washed in scent free detergent and in an airtight tote. It was just a regular, regular jacket. And if he would have put it under his scent lock, he would have been fine, but he didn't do that. And um, I told him I'll never take you out of state again. That pissed me off that much. To have scent control as, a, as an option and not take advantage of it, I struggle to comprehend why hunters don't use cell lock. I just don't understand it because it's such a major advantage. He would have killed that buck. I would have killed that buck if he hadn't have been here. So, um, you know, as hard as I work at getting places to hunt and prepping locations, I prep that tree. Um, it it just it just bugs me. It, that's why I hunt alone. That way, if somebody makes a mistake, it's me. I've hunted with guys that hunt out of tree stands and that don't use cell lock before, and I, I'm not doing that anymore. It just absolutely ruins my hunts. I am not on public land. I actually just got permission to hunt this property. I asked somebody, and they said, sure, it's January, so go for it. Uh, it's January 2nd. This is my first hunt. I've been here three days. Just looking around. And this is kind of an interesting, it's got a really steep hill over there. Obviously the place gets gun hunted, there's a gun hunting shack. Guy said he did wound a 10 point of a gun he didn't get. There's a creek coming down through here. Old hayfield, I don't think that's been anything done with that in a while. There's another creek coming down through here. From that creek. Goes up that really steep hill. That hill continues. There's more hay field. Still a steep hill. And then it comes down. Right here's where the 
two creeks converge. Now he said that deer actually come across that road before dark, going through the ditch under the road that this creek flows through. So I guess we'll find out because this is a newbie to me. See this? I hunted this spot last night. Saw quite a few does and fawns and one six point. But I could cross that was probably three inches deep. And now look at it. I filmed this from the tree. This was all dry ground up here. And this is since last night. Now this is Tuesday morning, so I hunted this Monday evening. Unbelievable. <laughs> and there are cities down here in southern Ohio that are getting flooded, so I'm pulling my stuff and getting out. That pipe over there, I don't know what that's from. Probably back when they were doing oil here. Uh, that, was, <laughs> that was four foot over the creek bed yesterday. Heck, I'm even going to have a hard time going over there and getting my camera. If I don't get it today, I wouldn't be able to get it at all. Look at the crook. Wow. I could hop across that sucker yesterday. It was literally three, two to three inches deep. I'll bet it's four feet deep right now. I'm glad I put the camera on this side. There's that big hill I was talking about. I'm gaining on getting home. It's still raining. It's been pretty much raining all the way from southern Ohio to central Michigan. Would have been flooded out big time. Kind of bummed. One season's over for me. Last night was my last bow hunt of the season. Kind of depressing. But we'll get to go to the ATA show next week. So uh, look forward to that. That's the archery show in Indianapolis. I get a lot of emails, probably on average about 50 a day. And I don't mind answering emails, but if any of you guys are emailing me questions, please keep them relatively short. Some of them read like a chapter in a book with multiple questions, and I really don't have time to read something that lengthy. I know I tend to be detail-oriented myself, so I understand people wanting to give a quick description, but please keep them as short and brief as possible. And I will try to get to them. I have probably 150 scent control requests on my email that I have to reply to when I get home probably tomorrow. But anyway, it's over and out, so uh, everybody take care and hope you have a great 2023. If interested, the links to many of the podcasts I've been on or for information about my two-day whitetail workshops that take place in March and April, please visit my website at d-e-e-r dash j-o-h-n dot net Thank you for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and to receive notifications for future videos, please subscribe.